right, so what I want to talk to you guys today about is my feminine hygiene routine. have heard so, from so many women about the type of disorder, because usually we don't have these conversations until there is disorder in our routine or in our, in our uh, reproductive lives. So I want to share this with you guys because I really want to build a sense of community, especially among women. Um, there's not enough of this knowledge being shared, and it might be out there, but you know, these are things that we need to keep sharing so that all of us can know and can embrace and can just find the best path for us as like as, in, as individuals because something that may work for me may not work for you but hopefully I'll explain to you why I use what I use and maybe it can give you ideas about how you may want to change up and or you know not change up so let's go um, so the first thing I want to show you guys are penny liners so penny liners yes are important they keep our underwear clean. What I use is um, currently is the NatraCare brand. And um, why I use it is because they're made from an organic cotton. And as it says on the label, it doesn't have plastics, perfumes, or chlorine. So why that is important is because plastics are known to be a hormonal disruptor. I like to purchase my feminine hygiene uh, that is without whether it's uh, being processed using chlorine, which a lot of makers will use in order to bleach the cotton so that it's that bright white color, that really unnatural color that you might see with some brands. Um, and also, you know, perfume free. So many of us are really sensitive to perfumes. And even though we might want to keep, you know, everything smelling nice down there, it does more of a disservice to us in the long run for us to smell nice down there when it could actually be contributing to other issues such as fibroids and such. So keep the fragrances out ladies. That's just my suggestion to you. Those are three things that I do not want in my lady area and those are three things that can disrupt the hormonal functions of your body. Next, so following along the same lines, my pads for that lovely cycle, you know, a lot of us ladies get every month. Uh, I use seventh generations, free and clear. And they also are chlorine free and they don't have any fragrances. Um, I understand the way, um, you know, a disposable pad works is that you need to have some kind of impermeable barrier between um, you and your body to keep that flow from coming through. So that's why at some points plastic, they're hopefully a safer plastic would be used to do that, okay? Um, the other thing is, is that there's always, in this case, an alternative to this, but you will have to work a little bit harder or invest a little bit more money on the front end to make it work for you. And that is using cloth pads. Now, um, you know, and this also goes for panty liners, but some people find much success with using cloth pads. I commend them and I too um, will be venturing down that journey at some point, um, but I know myself and I have a busy, busy schedule. So for me and my lifestyle, these pads still work, um, but for those that want to look for a eco-friendly option and one that is more cost-effective in the long run, definitely look into cloth pads. If you're a DIYer, there's ways that you can make them. I'll put some links below in the description box. And there are also benefits to that. You know, you don't have to worry about plastic. Um, you don't have to worry about, um, you know, the chlorine and everything like that. So definitely check that out. And if you guys find anything interesting, as always, leave it in the comments below and share it. You know, there's probably someone out there that's looking for the same exact thing. Before I go on, don't forget to subscribe and also click that bell for notifications. Thanks. So when it comes to that time of the month, there are some of us that get these extreme cravings. Um, I, in particular, I crave sweets and I used to crave meats. I don't crave meats anymore, but those are my two things. And if you saw the video on alkalinity, you would know that sweets are acidic. When you don't have the right flora in your system, what happens is, is that 
um, the yeast that may be hanging out in there, um, yeah, it loves itself some sugar. So especially if you're a sweets craver, you might really want to look into this next suggestion um, because it might save you from a really uncomfortable yeast infection. Yeah. Garlic has, honestly, garlic changed my life. Um, you know, many of us, when we, when we might be going through those hormonal changes and fluctuations, might also get a yeast infection. So between getting those urges and, you know, eating those sweets, or if you're a meat eater and meat eating those meats, um, you know, and also I'm not gonna leave out my vegetarians and vegans too, because if you're eating a ton and ton and ton of sugar, um, especially things that are high in sugar, like, uh, you know, bananas and those sorts of things, you still could go through this as well. What I found to help me out and I know some of you guys might, may or may not disagree, to each his own, because of its antifungal, antimicrobial, you know, anti antibiotic, anti everything, you know, properties. I use that instead of like Monoset and these creams out here that usually contribute into the cycle of yeast infections. You know, I, I use the garlic, which has worked wonders. And I have not had to touch a cream in, I would say, close to 10 years now. Uh, yeah, because I, you know, the garlic, that tackles the yeast. And then also what I will say I do to help restore the flora in my system, I start taking like probiotics in. Um, and anytime you're, you're sending something in your body to destroy invaders indiscriminately, which usually comes in the form of antibiotics, um, you should always take a, a probiotic. So my go-to when I have or feel like, you know, a yeast infection could be coming on is garlic, and probiotic so those two together okay so that is tip number three so this one is a little bit more taboo and i would say only use it in emergency cases like if you are about to pass out from a yeast infection is doing an apple cider vinegar juice i know that sounds crazy um, and I'm not telling you to put the whole bottle up there because you will wipe out everything, including your reproductive system. But what I am saying is, is that if you're able to dilute it and just douching with it, that should help to provide some relief, okay? You know, and then you want to not go back to those sweets and meats, <laughs> like you may have the urge to, but start to introduce um, more alkaline things into your diet. So tip number five and my last tip for this video is actually going to be using Don Quiet. It has allowed me to stay so balanced and even. I don't have crazy mood swings. I'm not super emotional during that time anymore. Um, you know, I, I'm, able, I'm able to stay steady and even keel. And honestly, I used to be at a point that I was not functional just even from the pain so you know taking that helped me stay functional hope my five tips were helpful for you guys um, like anything do your research learn your body um, and share um, because we're a community and especially as females these conversations need to continue all right so till next time peace